I'm not gonna lie, that was one of the best anchorages. Yep. No, no wind, no current. Oh, a hint of a breeze. Super peaceful night's sleep. And we're, how much is below the keel? <laughs> Doesn't show yet. 2.3. 2.3 feet below the keel. It's all mud here. And the chart says that this area is very sticky. The anchor set in literally 10 seconds. It was super nice. So we're making some coffee and then we're going to head towards essentially Kitty Hawk today. Um, there's a bridge there that as long as the wind, the wind should be fine. We should make it underneath it. If the wind's blowing water onshore, we might hang out at an anchorage on this side of the bridge. If it's not, and we can make it under the bridge, we're going to go under the bridge and then immediately go to an anchorage, or sorry, a marina on the other side. There's going to be some pretty strong winds this afternoon and tonight, and there's not a safe anchorage that we can make it to before dark. Um, so we're just going to play it safe and go to a marina, go to a marina uh, tonight and also top off on some water. If you can't tell, Colin's still half asleep. Yeah. <laughs> it is six o'clock right now. <laughs> and these have been early mornings the whole trip, so. <sighs> hey, I'm Ashley, and this is my husband, Colin. At the start of this year, we traded in our camper van and bought a 1991 50-foot sailboat. Colin has a ton of sailing experience, but me, not so much. Our plan is to update our boat and start our adventure around the world. Come along with us as we experience the lows and the highs of sailing. So we're passing a couple catamarans. There's another one anchored right here. They're going up the ICW. I know these guys have 65 foot masts because they all claim on their websites like this this Fountain Pujol and this he's lagoon not, over here. He's not gonna be able to make it under that bridge. So I'm gonna radio him and see how tall his mast is because we're at 64 and a half and we took our light off. So I might give him a heads up and a warning. So just had a conversation with that gentleman on his larger catamaran frolic. Uh, he is at 62 feet mast height, which is kind of nice because you still get a nice tall mast, but you don't have to worry about the ICW that much. Um, he was warning us about the inside track of the ICW, which we are not doing. We're going out around Nags Head and the Washington Bridge that's down there. Um, but yeah, he was saying that he just went through there and it was reading 64 and a half feet but that was also because the same wind that we got was blowing the wind out of there. But we're not going that route. Um, but we've been talking to some of the boats coming by, hoping to find one that's going on the route that we went on. This is the one that was recommended by everyone in our Facebook group, the Live Aboard Lifestyle group. Uh, it's supposed to be a beautiful sail, easy bridge, so long as the wind is not blowing a bunch of water into the sound and causing it to rise. Again, we'll see when we get there. I'm going to call a marina and see if they have an accurate um, height reading on the bridge as of today. And also if the tides in the area are accurate. Because I don't exactly know when it switches from it being a non-tidal area like we are in now to actually being tidal. And online it shows a tide chart for the area. So I'm going to call and get some local knowledge. Good morning. Um, I am a southbound sailing vessel headed your way around one o'clock or so. Um, I was wondering two things. One, if you knew what the current height of the bridge was um, today or yesterday. And then two, if it's not high enough for us, do you have a transit slip available for a 49 foot sailboat? Um, I did not know anything about the bridge height. We don't normally do with a lot of sailboats, so we don't really keep up with that. Um, we're the majority of sport fishing vessels. Gotcha. Um, 
if it's not high enough for us and we need to hang out for a day or so, do you have availability for a transit slip? Yeah, we would be able to accommodate you for a day or so. We are kind of full right now, but um, just for a day or so, we would be able to help you. Yeah, it would just be until the wind shift and blow some water out of the sound. Gotcha. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Have a good day. Bye. All right, this is the one area where we were told not to follow the charts, to just follow the local mar markers in the water. And you guys kind of see why, because up here they're out, completely out of the channel. And the water is not deep at all. So we're following the markers that are here instead of our charts getting a little sketch now. It's getting really sketch. Colin. What? And the depth. The depth. It's really frustrating because we're obviously in the channel and we were negatives. This whole trip is trying us. We're running into everything that we did not want to do. Hey everyone, we haven't picked up the camera for a few hours, but we are happily relaxing. You can see Ashley back there at Safe Harbor Outer Banks. We successfully made it under the last bridge that could be an issue uh, given the wind tides. Uh, now we're going to head south towards Beaufort, North Carolina. To Maybe tomorrow, maybe the next day, we're still trying to figure out the schedule here. Uh, but we are safely tucked away in a marina for the first time with the boat since leaving New York. We are happy to be here. There is quite the big storm moving through. Um, it's also very cheap. It's only 60 bucks for the night for us uh, for our 49 foot boat. So we're happy about that. The marina on the other side of the bridge was going to be 130 or so. And it was on the other side of the bridge. So we made it under the bridge. We're good. We're tucked away in here. We're happy. And that's it for tonight. I think tomorrow we're going to go to one of the fish markets that's here at the marina and see if we can't get some frozen fresh um, or some fresh or frozen seafood from this area. It's a huge fishing spot. I'll show you real quick. We are 
360 degrees surrounded by fishing boats uh, sport fishers and this is actually a boat works it's bayless 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 boat works i'll link it down below they actually make those boats here so there's one being commissioned right now that is out for sea trials we were talking about that earlier i can't imagine what that cost to run uh, but if you can afford a boat like that, you can afford the, the gas and the fuel and, the, and the, the maintenance and the crew for it. But yeah, completely surrounded by fishing boats. So we're going to hit up the fish market. There's like five or six here just in this tiny little, tiny little harbor. So we're excited about that. They all open around 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. So we're going to hit them up first thing because we may be taking off tomorrow. We may hang out here another day. We're going to look at the wind in our schedule and see if we can maybe pull just relaxing and staying here for another night but we'll know more tomorrow that's it so we have decided to stay for the day we hope we, we, hope. Have, to we have to ask if we can extend our boat slip one more night uh, but right now we're walking up to the um, one of the fish markets that's here in this little fishing uh, marina and hopefully gonna get some fresh fish to either have tonight and further part of ooh, further of our um, ooh, yeah. fish tacos yeah for the rest of our, our trip but this Chris Craft oh my yeah it's a new Chris Craft if I had the money for a motorboat it'd be something like this because, well, one, I couldn't afford the fuel <laughs> for triple 300s, but in general, it's a beautiful boat. Just a simply beautiful, beautiful boat. Another really cool thing that's here at this marina, of all the marinas, is this research little sailboat that's a drone that sails by itself and just goes across the water doing research and stuff. It's completely autonomous. It uses the solar to charge the little motors inside, but then it just sails across mapping and doing stuff with the waterway. And I have no clue why it's here, and it's pretty awesome. I've never seen one up close. Mission unsuccessful so far. We um, did not realize this road does not actually cut over. Cut over to it, so. We walked for a good 20 minutes just to realize that we have an, at least another 20 minutes to go or we could just drop the dinghy in the water and be done and over there in like two minutes. So we're going back to do that. <laughs> so just left the seafood place. I got a pound of fresh tuna and then a frozen pound of mahi-mahi uh, which we're going to keep frozen for a couple days but go through the tuna pretty fast here it looks i don't know if you, i'll show you back at the boat it looks very very good so i talked colin into going back out here and seeing the boat that was out here it looks like it caught on fire or something and the wind is really died down a lot so this is the best time to go um, the local, the locals said that they think someone went and abandoned the boat out here. They just pushed it out or let it go off because they didn't want to deal with it anymore. That it happens quite often out here with, with older boats. So we're going to check it out. You can see the channel goes from here to here. That's how wide that we had to share our boat with the big sport fishing boats that were coming through going like 40. So it was pretty nerve wracking, not getting hit. Racing 
sales. Had racing sales. Fuck. Stuck. Big spinnaker pole. Yeah, so we're looking at the boat. Looks like an old race boat, which is sad, but I don't know what it would be doing out here because there's no racing out here. There's way too much. I mean, Oriental is 90 miles away. There's racing there, but I highly doubt this thing floated all the way from Oriental. You can tell someone's been out here that doesn't have a sailboat. All the stuff that could be used on a motorboat is completely gone. But everything for a sailboat is still here. There's still cells in their bags here. Crazy. Wow. Sad, but kind of awesome to see this. Got some big bug come out. Bird or something. What are you looking for?